Plus, Boulder County Jail back then had carpeting on the floors and shit. In the general population areas, like if you, Boulder County Jail wouldn't classify you like sticky fingered, cocksucker. No, they classified you like how long you were in there and how your behavior was. So first, I don't know what they called the indoctrination. You were up till nine, and then if you made it out of there, you went to a different color, and you were up till ten. Then if you made it out of there, you were like in fucking red, you made it to eleven. And then the next fucking step of the game, if you made it up there, you were up to like one, and they had cable TV. So your goal in both accounts, you think I'm fucking kidding you? I remember when I got into comedy in 92, 91, I was hosting at the broker, and there was a fucking article on the front page of the Boulder Broker at that time. The Boulder Broker was the club I worked at. The, whatever the fuck the name of the newspaper was in Boulder. You know, a lot of newspapers in my life. But in the front page, they said that Colorado had two jails went, that were in the top five jails in the country. Like they did like a fucking intermediate survey in jail. Mm -hmm. And everybody wanted to go to Aspen number one and Boulder was number two. That's the way it was for years because Aspen didn't really have a jail. Sorry to interrupt my intriguing conversation on a Monday, but listen, we're sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Listen, it's just like going to the gym or the dentist. We should be caring for our mental health as much as our physical health. Me, I've been with BetterHelp for about seven months now, and they've helped me through what I was going through, whatever it was, it was in my mind. My anxiety is at bay, and I'm way better. So do me a favor, BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video phone and even live chat sessions with your therapist. But if you don't want to see the camera, you don't have to. It's much more affordable, a lot more affordable than in-person therapy. And you can start communicating with your therapist in less than 48 hours. Give it a try. See why 2 million people have used BetterHelp Online Therapy, including your, including your Uncle Joey. We're sponsored by BetterHelp and joint listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash Diaz, D-I-A-Z. That's betterhelp.com slash Diaz. Betterhelp, B-E-T-T-E-R, H-E-L-P.com slash Diaz. And check out BetterHelp's new podcast, Getting Better, on Apple, Spotify, and everywhere else you get your podcast. Back to the podcast, Savages. Aspen threw you in like some fucking county place. That's what Ted Bundy. Listen, Ted Bundy escaped from there. And that was still the jail they had in 1992. The same jail was like a fucking cell in Aspen County Courthouse. They don't have a fucking jail or a county jail. I think you got to go all the way to Glenwood Springs. But if you get arrested in Aspen, they're nice people in Colorado. They don't want you to go to county jail. So they keep you in fucking Aspen and they would bring you in catering from all the restaurants in the area. Who wouldn't want to do that? You're up there eating fucking French food, you know, Tibetan food, whatever the fuck they got in Aspen because people eat all that crazy shit. <clears throat> Sorry about that cough. I'm still getting flashbacks of the COVID and the weed don't help, but who gives a fuck? I got one foot in the grave, one in the banana peel, just like Betty White. When you're a comic now, you got to be sweating if you're fucking old. After Betty White, after, not well, Betty White wasn't a stand-up from the store, but after Bob Saget and fucking uh, uh, my man over there, you got to be saying to yourself, who the fuck is next? So that's how I've been feeling lately. That's why I've been taking a fucking uh, multivitamin, a new one. I'm drinking some purple shit from my fucking joints so it don't hurt as much. But anyway, we were talking about this uh, comedy store thing with Tammy and who was up there. Guys, there used to be a lot of older guys when I got up there for about four years. We had Alan Stevens. We had, I'd see Lenny Clark come in from time to time, another one of my fucking idols. You had Charlie Hill, the Indian dude. You had Bob Saget. You had... You know, Louis Anderson would come in and visit Mitzi. You know, on Saturday nights, if Mitzi was there, all these tremendous comics would come down. Some that you heard of and some that you'd never heard of that, you know, had just comedy had moved them. There was a lot of guys that came to the store back then on Saturday nights that had moved on to producing, writing. Yeah, you had your Saggots and you had your, I can't even, Gary Shamlings. You had your Andrew Dice Clays. 
you had your Judy Golds, you had a lot of older names that would come in, and I gotta tell you, man, I never had a beef with none of you. I stayed away from them for as long as I could. I never got in the way of Gary Shandling. I never spoke up there until I was spoken to. So once they started talking to me, you know, it's not like Gary Shandling was down there every fucking night. It not, it's not like Bob Saget was down there every fucking night. It's not like Louis Anderson was down there every night. When I first met Louis, he still had his, he would only come in like during the week because he had his uh, show out in Vegas and it was doing great. And Louis would come to the store to actually take talent from the store to use them as openers. I'll never forget that. And I'll never forget having a conversation on why he couldn't use me. And guys, I did nine years on the fucking church. I did two years, a year or two with Felicia. And we got two years on this. You've never heard me say the conversation Louis and I had on why I couldn't work for him. He came to me as a man. He goes, hey, man, you're a funny dude and shit. I would love to use you on my show. But I do an all-family show. I do a lot of old ages, a lot of all-ages show where any age could come and people bring in their 13-year-old grandson to see me. And Louis, I learned one thing from Louis, man. In fact, I went to see Louis when I was out in Vegas working that that Catch a Rising Star. I used to work at the fucking hotel with the swords and shit. And I remember one night I had an early, I was a feature act. I wasn't headlining yet. So I got out of there and caught Louis's act. And I, I'll never forget one thing Louis did on stage. Louis, before he went on stage, he would find out who had a birthday and he would go in his fucking pocket. Not the hotel, not the casino, not anybody else. Louis would go in his pocket and buy roses for any woman that was coming to the show. And I remember that I watched the whole show and he was fucking funny as shit. And I remember that he came out. I don't know if anybody else did this. A lot of you guys are going to listen to this and go, Joey, what the fuck? We've been to Vegas shows before. It has it's been, I don't know. I saw Louie do it first. And that's why it inspired me so much. And I got what Louie did. He gave them roses. Not like he called them up to the stage. He walked his chubby little ass out to them. And said, this is for you for coming. And let me tell you something. The night I went, there was maybe six women he gave roses to. I think five of them just broke out into tears. They were like grandmas and older moms that their husbands had surprised them with Louie or whatever. 